hi, Sheila Gunn Reed for Rebel News, and I have a very important update to bring you in the fight to overturn an emergency court order health bureaucrats in Alberta won against every single human in the province. That's the court order that allowed for Pastor Art Pulowski and restaurant owner Chris Scott to be held in jail for two days last week. A judge has denied our emergency application to have the restraining order set aside, but the fight isn't even close to over because we are going to cross-examine Chief Medical Officer Dina Hinshaw and everyone else who signed off on the decision to strip Albertans of their freedoms in a secret court in Calgary. First, let me show you the order. It names Chris Scott, Glenn Carrot of United We Roll, and the rest of us as Jane Doe's and John Doe's. It reads, the named individual respondents and any other person acting under their directions or in concert with them or independently to like effect and with notice of this order shall be restrained anywhere in Alberta from organizing an in-person gathering, including requesting and inciting and inviting others to attend an illegal public gathering, promoting an illegal public gathering by social media or otherwise, or attending an illegal public gathering of any nature in a public place or a private place. So this could be even your own backyard. And if you engage in an illegal public gathering, like a birthday party with six people outside in a park, you can be taken to jail like those two men were because you are now in contempt of a judge's court order. Let's say seven of you want to stand outside of your MLA's office because the government has ruined your business. That can send you right to the slammer in Alberta. And even worse, this order was done to Chris Scott, Glenn Carrot, and the rest of us in secret. The lawyer for Glenn and Chris, Chad Williamson, was left out of the process when the restraining order was first issued. Williamson is a litigation specialist working for Glenn and Chris through FightTheFines.com, Rebel News' largest civil liberties project to date, where we connect lawyers with people fighting their lockdown tickets and summonses in court. Glenn got a ticket for having an event with the Easter Bunny, and Chris opened his restaurant in defiance of the lockdowns on eat-in service. There was no opportunity to make arguments, even though the outcome of the order resulted in the liberty of two men being stripped away in the instance of Art for holding church and for Chris when he held a protest against the restaurant lockdown that saw the chains put across his restaurant doors. We're fighting this order in court. And Chad Williamson was in front of a judge yesterday to have it thrown out. Here's Chad with an update. We're just out of chambers and as many are aware, we had sought to have our procedural application heard to set the order aside on the basis that uh, council was not made aware of the overarching injunction application by Alberta Health Services and that the court was not advised that Chris and the Whistle Stop had counsel when they made their application. We were disappointed by the ruling of the court this morning that it would not hear our procedural application. We believe that this application should have been heard and we'll be reviewing the law in this area and we'll also be reviewing the ruling by the court over the weekend. The court did, however, rule that this matter was to be heard in its entirety, including cross-examinations on those swearing affidavits in support of Alberta Health Service's original application, including Dr. Hinshaw, and we intend to conduct those cross-examinations. Additionally, the court also provided uh, leave to explore through a separate process the constitutionality of the legislation upon which Alberta Health Services obtained their order and some of the auxiliary issues there as well. The order was also amended today. Now, those amendments have wider implications for how this matter relates to all Albertans. Unfortunately, without having reviewed the final language of these amendments at, this, at the time of this recording, and without the order having yet been filed, I'm not in a position yet to comment on the amendment further at this time. This isn't just a case of public health and civil disobedience and the role of government in these matters. This is a case concerning the principles of fairness and procedure and a determination as to what limits should be set uh, to government powers and how the Constitution and fundamental rights embodied therein relate to the government's interaction with Albertans, not just in the arena of public health, but in all other areas. This is a massive case and it's just getting started. It's uh, one that's not just an honor to be a part of fighting to uphold these cardinal legal principles upon which our country is founded, but a case of provincial and national importance. And there's so much more uh, that will come out of this uh, and will be of serious interest and concern to all Albertans going forward. And as always, we'll continue to keep everybody updated uh, as we're able to.
Okay, so that's not great news that the judge didn't immediately stay the order. So our rights are still restrained for now. But the good news is the judge is going to allow the full matter to be heard, including a full examination of the people involved in having the order issued. Chad Williamson is going to examine Dina Hinshaw on her decision making process and how Alberta Health Services can justify imprisoning two men and threatening the rest of us with imprisonment if we don't toe the line either. Now this is going to take a lot of time and money and there's a lot of work left ahead. The whole project to overturn the restraining order and examine the decision makers, including Dina Hinshaw, may cost $100,000, but we think freedom is worth it. And we know the government is going to fight us every step of the way. What we're doing here is for all of us. If you're able to help, please donate today at fightthefines.com. All donations there now qualify for a charitable tax receipt through the registered Canadian charity, the Democracy Fund. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. We're in a David and Goliath battle. We're taking on the Alberta government with their limitless resources to overturn a restraining order that limits the rights of Albertans to gather together to protest the decisions the government is making. To help us in this enormous project, please donate today at fightthefines.com and all donations there now qualify for a charitable tax receipt through the registered Canadian charity, The Democracy Fund. Again, that website is fightthefines.com.